in our uh, GitHub, uh, so, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about where that is. For those who are on Slack, it's just github.com slash code for carry, not the number four, the word for carry. Uh, and then you'll see carry connects uh, there for all these things. This is what the web page currently kind of looks like. Not kind of looks like, actually looks like. Um, we've been doing a lot of work. There was a lot of uh, work done over the weekend. Uh, thanks to everybody who attended for that. Uh, hopefully we all enjoyed that. At least we survived it. <laughs> That's a good thing. So what you can see here is the Carry Connects web page. Uh, what you do now is you can either uh, you know zoom into the map and look for uh, a business. You know you can search around this way, or uh, if you're looking for a particular business, you know like uh, La Farm for example, you can start typing the name, and as you type the letters, the list pulls up. So if we click on La Farm, you can see we've put a pin now on La Farm, and you can see. Oh, there's parking lots. So if we click on a parking lot, you get information about the lot, right? Uh, and now when you click directions, you're taken to uh, Google Maps, which gives you the directions from where, well, it obviously has not updated my location since I left work earlier today. <coughs> Caching problems. But nonetheless, you can see it takes us right down to... If you were at work, can you give me Yeah, if I was at work, it would, it would, it would uh, really, really well. <coughs> So it gives us that particular directions uh, on the map. I don't know why it's not uh, updated, let's see, if I refresh the page. It's waiting for Google. Oh. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Okay. But nonetheless, you kind of get the idea, and then you can click back here. Uh, you can also now, uh, one of the things that we're looking to do on the website is kind of a new uh, update. <clears throat> Uh, something for our app folks to perhaps consider. We were thinking about capturing some, uh, just, just a few little metrics. Uh, so what McCulley uh, and Claire have been discussing, working on, and implementing was uh, in addition to this info box, which actually is where folks can just send feedback. This, was just, this is just a simple implementation right now. So this actually is captured in a back-end Mongo database. Right, so we can actually capture feedback from a user if they have feedback. Um, the other thing too is like, for instance, when I select or when I selected La Farm to go to that, it actually registered a that somebody clicked on La Farm. Uh, it gives us a little bit of data to say, oh, look at that, uh, La Farm certainly gets a lot of interest, or you know, this place gets a lot of interest. It just gives us some, some just some rudimentary data. We're not collecting any user information or anything like that. Um, although we'd like to find some clever way to do, I, I think, and we can discuss this, you know, some way to determine unique visitors, right? So some, either some sort of uh, ID of some kind, I don't know if it's an IP address or a UUID of some kind, browser information, something where you can determine like, hey, cookie. well, cookie becomes a little bit obtrusive, right? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit, uh, I mean, there's standard practice, uh, but I was thinking of if we could find a more clever way to just say, hey, I noticed, uh, we can capture an IP address, mm -hmm. and so we can see, oh, based on this uniqueness. But there's that, that has its own set of problems as well. Yeah, 30 people in this room look like one. It, exactly, everybody mm -hmm. going via one, so you don't really know. But nonetheless, just an idea, um, uh, and right now that's actually happening. Uh, okay. So that's you great. can see kind of uh, what's happening here, and I, the one, like the big thing that's missing from the web page right now is you can see we've rendered the parking lots, but we're not rendering the businesses yet, the uh, actual markers. For the businesses to give you the business information. Uh, so that'll be something we work on tonight. Um, and I also neglected to mention at the beginning, we're, we're a JavaScript family. <laughs> uh, so uh, everything is done, including the app, in JavaScript, right? Uh, so if you have JavaScript skills or want to learn JavaScript skills, you can play in both sides of the, the camp here. Uh, with that, I'll... Robert, can I add one? Oh, yes. So one of the other things we are doing, so this is an overlay on top of OpenStreetMap. So this past couple of days, I've been adding features into OpenStreetMap. So sidewalks and stuff. So there's another project going on in the local brigades called NC ClearPath, which is mapping all the sidewalks and uh, curb cuts and stuff. Because there's an app that was rolled out in Seattle and somewhere else that gives you kind of a Google directions for like wheelchair. Um, you know, if you want to know how to navigate the city based on your uh, 
accessibility issues. Um, so, you know, and it's it, open it, it maps is the so OpenStreetMap is kind of the uh, thing. So mm -hmm. I've just been loading a lot of stuff in on that um, using uh, well, just my knowledge that I spent a lot of time down here. But uh, what's really helpful for uh, like curb cuts and stuff is Google Street View. So clear, you can see all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. making sure that all that information is put in properly. So, if anybody doesn't want to do programming but wants to spend some time like uh, putting more features into the underlying map now that we're using uh, as open data, I'd uh, be more than happy to help people to uh, figure out how to do that and uh, add some some stuff to our map. Very good. Thank you um, for the dev community uh, and for folks who are taking notes. One of the things I want to point out is some of the properties that uh, we've been adding to the data. So for example, on a parking lot, right? We see the parking spaces and things like this. What you don't see is some additional properties. And I wanted to point them out because as we go forward with developing, we wanna take this into account and how we can use them. So this parking lot right here is a perfect example. You can see there's an entrance off of East Chatham and there's also an entrance off of Cedar. Uh, so I've added multiple uh, uh, properties here. Uh, what I've done is I've added an entrance one, which has the uh, GeoJSON location for a primary entrance, and I'm just winging it here. I'm just mm -hmm. designating a primary entrance, however I see fit, uh, which I hope kind of makes sense. And if there's a secondary entrance, so there's an entrance one and entrance two. Additionally, I figured, well, you know what? We have lazy days and things like this that close particular streets. So I added an entrance one active, entrance two active, so we could flag that on a dynamic basis to say, oh, that entrance is not open right now. Uh, and then I added a general lot active or not, because maybe the lot is shut down, things like that. And the other thing I added at the request of the app team is uh, a lot center property, to, uh, which I believe you wanted to use that as kind of a general place to drop the pin, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. So that's, that's one attribute. Hey, Chris. Come on in, the water's fine. Not all this. Um, so we've, we've got several attributes added there, right? Um, I have completed, I believe, and Ian's gonna keep me honest uh, tonight, uh, most of the business data has now been loaded. Um, some things that I'm struggling with is there are, like this is, this is a perfect example, right? The Cary Innovation Center, we have what? Eight, 10 businesses. All at 201, is it two, whatever it is? Yeah. East, East Chatham, right? Chatham, yeah. So, trying to figure out how we can deal with like pins that will get stacked on top of each other because they're all together. Mm -hmm. So, that's something for us to maybe work on tonight or think about tonight and ways we can cleverly attack that problem. Um, and I think that's it. But I just want to make you guys aware of that information because that's the information that's been added. Uh, okay. The businesses uh, are up to date, and Ian and I are going to spend some quality time tonight reviewing that uh, and making sure that all came from the Heart of Cary Association volunteers. Also, I heard from Carolyn uh, recently that the uh, photography club at Glen Eyre, Glen Eyre. Yep. Uh, the retirement community, they're going to go out and take pictures. So we will have a set of pictures coming our way. Uh, it may not, it's not really necessary, it's not, it's not holding us up, right? It's just another layer we can add to the app when it comes time to say, here's this parking lot, oh, here's a picture, so you know what the interest looks like when you're driving down the road, right? Something like that. Uh, and we've got a retirement community full of uh, uh, photographers that are gonna go out and take pictures. And so that's another way we engage the community. And they've already done it, I'm going over to download everything from SD cards on Friday. Oh, fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Look at that, see they are, Perfectly punch. Mm -hmm. All right, so turn the microphone over to you now, Matt. I'll shut up. <laughs> as far as the, the markers, um, when you have a bunch of them on one place, you, there might be something called clustering where it'll show like a number, like a 10, and when you zoom oh, in. Oh, you, and you can cycle through yeah. them or something like that. Okay. Could be helpful. I don't know. Yeah, we, we, did, we just have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, because we have, there are several sub yeah, your, shopping your places place down is here. Another one that has yeah, there are like six or seven spots that have multiple businesses. Yeah inside so
that's correct. The JSON file that holds all the uh, business information. Um, ultimately, the pictures from that, I mean, we can all house it right there in GitHub and serve it from there until we find a better back end. Right, up to, I think the limit was, did we look at that? It was like 5,000 an hour. Okay, so we, we have some leeway until we all become famously uh, okay. uh, involved in this. So just um, the GitHub page again is code for carry, and there's a number of projects on there. There's a web, there's a mobile, there's a data. And then under this mobile one that we're working on, we have a project listed with a number of tasks that we've been working on, some of them you know, are in progress, complete, or done. So we just got our first pull request merged. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and so what this did was um, we've added um, just icons, and you can see where we want we wanted to center them. Right. So now that you have that lot centered, you can put yep. that that little marking marker icon on there. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then we also added um, ah. on the marker, the, you know, just some information about 36 spots, how many handicap electric. Um, so we just wanted to prove that we could do that, which is great. Um, and then very similar to the to the, um, the web version, you can come in here, you can type like bakery, see a couple bakeries listed, choose it, you see some information here about it. Um, drop the pin on it, okay, great. Yeah, drop the pin, you know, and then I can you know, go and look at, okay, well, it's, and maybe we could show, um, we're gonna about, you know, work on parsing the data. Yes, but, um, yes. But also showing some descriptive things too, like you had said after hours only. You know, oh yes, the, res the restrictions, yeah, yes, the restrictions. yes, exactly. And we did get all of these working, so oh. let's see, ex actually we did not get the find parking work, okay. but same thing, you hit get directions, sorry, we got some glitches here, but. It takes you over to your yeah. navigation. Let's app. go right around the corner, come back here, um, yeah, the button clicks are kind of crazy, but we can also go to the farm bakery. Oh, okay, cool. Do that as a link. So you can pull up the link. Okay, and that's in the data yeah. as well. You, you can tap this phone number and it'll call it also. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Love that because that way you can actually call your destination and say, mm -hmm. "Hey, are you is the food <coughs> truck there or whatever?" Yeah, cool. Um, so then we're gonna work on this. Find parking is obviously you can just look here. This one's pretty easy, you know. Right. I'm just going to pull in there, but um, we had some thoughts about that. Right, and I think we've discussed a couple of different methods. Mm -hmm. so I think for version one, perhaps it's uh, uh, easiest to just designate on a per business mm -hmm. preferred parking and something like that. Yes. You know, just just to, just so people know, like, hey, this is this is where the preferred parking lot mm -hmm. is. All right, so that's um, that's what we've got. Very cool. And um, we're working on. And you're pulling from the live data, and I know this because I added that uh, parking lot where Type A 101 is oh, yeah. in the middle of the screen. I just added that parking lot because I was like, oh, we have stuff there. Oh, cool. We got to note that. So it's it's working. It's updating. Yeah. Very nice. Right. And we're so a couple things we're working on. The, um, we haven't even thought about the tablet UI yet. Obviously, people might open this up on something like a tablet. Um, we might want to filter. You know, have some extra buttons here that makes it very easy to. Just show me the electric, you know, parking spots. Oh yeah. I'm in town. Handicap parking. Um, there is a welcome screen under development. So when you launch the app for the first time, yeah, we need the same thing. Mentions park carry. You know, code for carry. Why you're using the app, and then got it. You know, and then you just continue on and start using it. Very good. Kind of the intention of what, the why you downloaded this, and you know, just some pointers. Great. Good stuff. It looks really good. Thank you. I'm on. So uh, your map, you're using Apple Maps. Yes. On this one. So Apple Maps on the iOS side and Google Maps on the Android side. Okay. Because those you can use. Uh, the native. Na you yes. can use natively without worrying about the whole API key authentication issue. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So perfect. you still have to worry about the key on the Android side, but it's that's your. Oh, we That's your easiest option. Okay. Got you. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. So what we're, what we're going to do now, folks,